Welcome to Handy Quilter Live. I'm Brenda Grells with Handy Quilter and I'm here with a good friend of mine, Joe Cunningham. Hi. Joe, you and I have both been involved in the quilt world for, should we say decades? I would say decades. Yeah. I mean, for, it's, we saw the whole thing happen, for, get built up through the 80s. It's true. And the 90s. And back when I was a magazine reader, I read every quilt magazine that came in my mailbox uh -huh. from cover to cover. Uh -huh. Uh, you were one of the contributors to those magazines. I know, a long time ago. Back when they were, remember magazines? I do. <laughs> They're still one of my favorite ways to get content. But I remember most about you is that you were a hand quilter at that time. It was the first thing that I learned how to do was uh, uh, to quilt by hand. I had met uh, Gwen Marston and Mary Schaefer, and um, <clears throat> uh, I was helping Gwen write a, a, a book about Mary Schaefer. And she said, if you're going to write about quilts, you should know how to quilt. Huh. So she taught me the rocking stitch. A wise woman. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, and so I learned how to quilt. So then uh, I got really into quilting designs and the history of quilting designs uh -huh. and how they developed, you know, uh, through the whole, from the 1700s, 1800s, how they came from Europe. And, and you're talking about traditional designs. Traditional quilting designs. And so I, then I learned to copy them so that I could cop, so that I could do almost all of them freehand. Sure. Even. Oh. Uh, feathers and cables and everything, just like the old time quilters did. So you're talking about actual quilting designs, not just piecing designs. That I'm talking about the quilting designs, uh -huh. exactly, sitting at a frame. Yes. And uh, Gwen and I quilted many quilts, about 150 quilts together, and a lot of those were copies of antique quilts. And I, so that way... I, I'm getting a vision of you and I sitting around a hand quilting frame and doing Baptist fans, and mine would be this long, <laughs> and yours would be this long. <laughs> that's right. That's so right. I don't know if we could quilt together. Uh, I, I learned to sit at frames <laughs> with old ladies. Okay. Uh, uh, um, and, um, uh, that's, and, and I learned to copy everybody else's stitches. So when I went to G's Bend, for instance, uh -huh. the first time and sat down to quilt with my friend Lucy Mingo, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I could copy her stitches and copy her design. And they couldn't believe it, you know. That, anyway, uh, now I'm bragging. Here we go. Here we so, go. so I'm thinking about her designs, and I'm thinking they have something in common with what you were doing with Gwen, though. That, that's the, right. A liberated kind of... How do you describe that kind of piecing? Well, to me, uh, um, the quilts that always appealed to me the most uh, uh, were the ones that Mary Schaefer uh, dissed. Uh, oh, that's nothing but a utility quilt. Uh -huh. And it was the utility quilts that turned me on the most. Uh, I loved them. Um, uh, the ones that were, uh, seemed improvised. And so those were the ones that I learned how to uh, really, I, I really dove deep into studying uh, how to make these, I call them freehand, how to freehand. make quilts freehand. Okay. And so uh, I copied some old ones and I've uh, uh, followed that, uh, that line up, right, right up through today. Okay. So you improvise your piecing, you do freehand piecing, mm -hmm. and then you're quilting. Uh, today, one of the reasons you're here at Handy Quilter is because you quilt on a long arm machine. I do. And, and you use a computer, which here at Handy Quilter, we call that the Pro Stitcher. That's it's, right. It's computer guided quilting. Now that doesn't sound improvised to me. No, people say, uh, uh, oh, so you use a computer, you just push the button and it just goes? Is it cheating? Is that cheating? <laughs> Uh, all of that. Uh, here, I have one right here. I could go back to the uh, design right in front of me. Um, and So uh, you've got a computer in front of you or I've, an iPad. I've got my iPad right in front of me and uh, I was thinking uh, about early quilting. One of the first things that I learned how to do was Baptist fans. Okay. Uh, that's what we called them in Michigan. I learned that down south they call them Methodist fans. I said that interesting. Uh, yeah, yes. el elbow quilting, you uh -huh. know, just concentric arcs. I got this quilt top done, and I didn't have an idea in my head for how to quilt it. And I thought, oh, I know, I'll do fans, right? Okay. And how will I do it? Well, uh, I just scribbled with my Apple Pencil a bunch of scribbled fans. It took me, uh, I bet you, three minutes. So we're looking at that right now. We're looking at that right now. Yes. Probably three minutes. Uh, and I did, I, I made about five or six of them. Six, I think, so that I could, you know, do a whole swath across the. Court. So this is sort of you improvising on a traditional Baptist fan. Into the computer. Into the computer, and the point of that is, if I did this design by hand, it would take me a very long time. 
Well, that's, that's one of the points. But another point is that you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't scribble by hand. No, it, that's it's true. very hard. I, 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 I'm a darn good quilter, and I can quilt almost anything I can think of. But it takes so long that even being wild, crazy, and free, you are careful. Sure, because it would be hard to be wild and crazy as you're putzing along and right. then think, oh, I'm going to be wild and go this way, but that, it's still slow. That's right. And so to be able to freely scribble my design, I, I do lots of really complex stuff, but on this one, I thought, well, that'd be fine. I wonder if we can uh, take a look at least at the, the, the back of this. Oh, the back. Uh, uh, this is the back. That's then. the back. Okay. So um, I am seeing that same design that you showed me on the computer right. stitched out here with your long arm. With my long arm on the pro stitcher. Um, and so that design has been repeated over and over on this quilt? No. It was so easy that I made a whole bunch of different panels of this so that it's different all the way across the no quilt. No kidding. It, uh, and it was just very quick and easy to do and, uh, uh, and it gave me just the effect that I was looking for. Um, uh, another thing, uh, I, we, can, we can unfold this quilt. We don't have to really see the whole thing uh, right now. but We'll but show it to you later. We'll show okay? it to you later. Okay. Uh, but uh, as you can see, it doesn't have anything to do with the quilting goes right across the piecing and the applique here. Uh, it doesn't, the quilting doesn't have to do, have anything to do with the color design, as far as I'm concerned. So you've, got, I, you've got tape applique to your surface and right. a lot of impro improvisational freehand, freehand piecing. Freehand piecing. But your quilting design... It's, it's also very free. Goes on top of it. It just goes on top of it. Mm -hmm. To me, that's one of the glories of old quilts that I, that, that I took from old quilts was lots of times, like with Baptist fans, for instance, it goes right across the design. Right. It ignores it. And I think that's fantastic that uh, uh, quilters could have these different grids, one right on top of the other. Right. Uh, almost all of the quilts that we looked at the, uh, in the hallway here, mm -hmm. the quilting has to do with. It has to do so, with the color design. So Joe's referring to a collection we have in our hallway of vintage quilt tops that were purchased on eBay by anonymous quilt makers. And the Handy Quilter educators have quilted them beautifully, but they are fairly traditional in their placement of the designs. Well, and in, in, in the conception of the design. Okay. Uh, so because we conceive in the modern world mostly that the, the job of the quilting is there to support the color design. Uh -huh. that's, that's almost always the way people think of it. From old quilts, from my study of old quilts, I got this idea that it doesn't have to at all. It's utilitarian. It's it holds the layers together. It holds the layer together and it contributes artistically. It, it has its own statement to make. Okay. And it's free to do that. A lot of quilters would refer to that as texture. Is that a word in your vocabulary? Sure, sure. But it doesn't sound like it's your intent. It's, uh, it's not so much my intent. Uh, what I'm using what I'm doing in general, I'm not sure I did it with this uh, uh, pattern. In general, I use the quilting to extend the metaphor of the quilt. So uh, my quilts are about something, and I want to extend the idea of what the quilt is about with the quilting. I'll bet you're going to have better examples coming yeah, up yeah, of yeah. that. I mean, I could talk about this one for a while, but okay. it's not that important. Uh, can we look at the one... Um, I'll take this off. Okay, thank to the you. Side. The one right behind us here. Can, uh, uh, can I look at that one? Okay. Uh, so this one uh, is about a couple different things. Uh, I'm as influenced by art as I am by quilts and my study of uh, art. So uh, not I don't mean a formal study. I never went to college, so I, I don't have an art degree or anything. But I have looked at a lot of art, and I think about it a lot. And um, it has always pained me when I see people who take really nice old quilts and cut them up and make them into jackets oh. and vests. I don't yeah. care for that. A cutter, a quilt that's in terrible shape and you cut it up the good parts and use that, that's one thing. But a really nice old quilt like Calvin Klein has done a whole lot and other people. We're calling you out, Calvin Klein. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I have been infuriated yeah. by that. And so uh, it, it, in my attempt to get arrested, what I have done is to cut up, uh, against the law actually, paintings painted by other uh, people. So the, the colored part on that quilt are, uh, is uh, made up of oil paintings that ma painted by other people 
that I cut up and sewed back together. Now I know you didn't get these from a museum. I didn't. They, I didn't get them from a museum. I, I got some from a, uh, from yard sales. Some have been donated to me by the artists. Uh, the one in the middle where it says "Son," uh, that uh, is an artist that I know, and he called me up. He said, "Joe, I hear you're looking for old paintings." I said, "Yeah." He said, "I have the worst painting ever made." <laughs> <laughs> so he probably feels you've improved on He's it. He's very happy that I cut up his first painting. Is there more than one painting in this quilt? Yes, about uh, four. Really? Yeah, uh, uh, and uh, including one of my very favorite paintings that I've owned. And I, there's nothing like running a rotary cutter across the surface of a painting. Well, especially you. not a favorite one. No, that, that's right, that's right. So uh, That's but, a but, powerful statement, Well, Joe. my feeling is that if we can cut up old quilts without uh, consequence, yeah. why can't we cut up old paintings? Uh, because you're implying that quilts aren't worth preserving. Quilts aren't, have no dignity. dignity in this world. Paintings, it's unethical and in many places illegal to cut up paintings. You can't destroy a work of art without the permission of the artist. And so, like I say, I'm trying to get arrested for it. I want to go before uh -huh. the judge uh -huh. and argue my case. Your Honor! I would love to hear that what's argument. What's the difference between a quilt and a painting? So, it's about art, this quilt behind me, and it's also about the... Uh, so there's an artist, my favorite artist, uh, Albrecht Durer is the guy with long hair there. A lot of people think that's Jesus, but it's Albrecht Durer, uh, <laughs> whose name I mispronounce all the time, is on there. And then uh, uh, there's some artist paint brushes. There's, uh, and all of this, I, I wanted to, I'm also making about uh, this quilt about this moment in history where things feel so crazy. So I wanted the feeling of our space-time continuum to be, uh, uh, have, punctured and have holes in it, it and have distortions. It seems really chaotic. Really chaotic, like yeah. it feels to me in this world today. Yeah. So that's you, all. You told me that the grid here is yeah. based on onion, onion bags. Onion bags. I could show you uh, uh, if we... Uh, I could so show while you. you're pulling it up, yeah. the onion bag, I'm going to ask you to multitask and answer sure. a question for me. Why didn't you stitch through the paintings? I tried to. And even oh. my handy quilter fusion would not handle the uh, uh, where, where there's all these junctions of uh, seam allowances all coming together it's under there. It's too thick. It's too thick. Because it's these so were like, painted on artist canvas. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And of course, then the layer of either acrylic or oil paint. Yes. Would, I can see where it would be difficult to make a stitch form through yes. that kind of fabric. Uh, if we could get a, a, a magnifying glass out, which we're not going to do, I could show you some of the little tiny holes where you did along try. the edges where I tried. Okay. And I had to uh, undo that okay. because it didn't work. I think this is a bag that's uh, it's on the quilt somewhere. And I could show you how I uh, use this. Um, it's so a that's a photograph you took of an onion bag that you laid flat on a black surface. That's right, on a coffee table. Okay. And uh, I bring up that in my program called Graphic here on my iPad. G R A P H I C. Graphic. Okay. And then I use my Apple pencil and I uh, start tracing the lines. Now, the lines are so faint here, they're, they're, they're so fine that you can barely see them, but th it's all right. Uh, just uh, in one second here, now I'll remove the uh, oh. onion bag and you can see what I'm starting to do there. So um, Now, Joe, I'm seeing a correlation between what you're doing and what we teach beginner quilters how to do here at Handy Quilter. There's something called a pantograph, yes. which is a design printed on paper, and it's put at the back of a machine. Mm -hmm. And you trace it. You hold on to the handlebars of the machine. You trace the pantograph with a laser light. Yes. And people get very worried about not following the lines exactly. Yes. And we remind them that once the pantograph is gone, nobody else knows where the line started. There you go. The same thing with your bag. Exactly. I don't think you were hitting it exactly like it. That wasn't your intent either. That was not my intent. Oh, here's a completed drawing of that bag. I can pull, bring that up. Uh, does that show? Yeah. So, right. Yeah. I, I don't care. No, the, the original onion bag is not the point. And the bag, knowing that it's an onion bag is not the point. That's not the point. The point is I wanted a grid 
uh, like those space-time grids that you'll see yeah. images of where a graph gets distorted. Right. I wanted to take that to an extreme. Kind of in a matrix. Uh, like a matrix kind of thing. Was this one also so easy to do that you did lots of them, or did you repeat that one? It on was not bed? easy because one of the main technical uh, uh, aspects of it is the machine it takes a lot longer and it's a lot more work if the machine starts and stops, starts and stops. Sure. So I do continuous line continuous drawings. Continuous line so is continuous, what we like in quilting. A continuous line of the onion bag takes me 45 minutes or, or so. And in the middle of there, almost inevitably, if I'm doing this at home in the evening, my wife, who I love dearly, will, will say, uh, uh, Joe, and I look up and and your line and is done. And my line's not continuous anymore. I have to start over. Yes, dear? Now, we have I software see. that helps you combine those things. That, uh, so if you're not a, Well, it's called the Pro Stitcher Designer. The Designer. So ah. even though you'd have a couple of different starts and stops, we can teach you how to join them. Uh, we'll make your life easier. I want to know this. Here's one more image that uh, is in that quilt. So that's Albert Durer. Albert Durer. And um, uh, just to show... Uh, I can uh, scribble on this some more and then take the picture away and there you go. And there he is. Now so, I, I know a little bit about software and I think you're working in layers, aren't you? Yeah, I'm working in layers, that's right. So the photos on one layer, your drawings on another. It's just like a piece of tracing paper, that's right. Okay, and if you wanted to add onion bags to them, you'd put that on another layer. That's right, right? that's right. Okay. Yeah. Huh. This is really interesting stuff. Joe, I, I can see you drawing on an iPad, though, and I have a feeling our viewers are wondering, how does that turn into stitches on a machine? So what's your process there? Here's my process is I, <clears throat> um, I will start out with a photograph. This one I have, this next quilt right here, I want to put chickens on it. These are some chickens owned by my friend Lucy Mingo in Cheese Bend. <laughs> so then I draw around the chickens. Then uh, I take the chickens away. Um, and here's a completed one of those. Uh, so that... Um, oh, look at them. And those are continuous lines. There's continuous line. This is one continuous line. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so you, you reach a point where the computer doesn't want to be doing this anymore. <laughs> and, and it starts being really slow. And you have, okay, okay, I'll give you one more line then. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, you get to stop for a minute and reload. So uh, it's, um, but it, but I believe this is this is a continuous line, and so I uh, export it. Um, I have a little Chromebook, mm -hmm. uh, notebook, computer, uh, that, and, and so I, I export it to uh, Dropbox. I can send it from here to my personal Dropbox account. That's how you manage a large file. A large file. You send it to Dropbox, and then I pull that up on my Chromebook. And I stick my little uh, uh, handy quilter USB drive <laughs> yes. stick into the USB drive and save it onto that. Okay. Then I pull it out. I go over and put it into my Pro Stitcher and uh, call up Art and Stitch. Okay. And Which was the design program we sold for many years with Handy Quilter Pro Stitcher. Right. Today we've got another program called Pro Stitcher Designer or Which PS Designer. Someday I'll be able to get designer myself. We, we, he might be able to talk us into it, yeah. <laughs> but the point of that software is it took your drawing and turned it into something that would create the machine to take stitches. Uh, that's right. I just pull it into Art and Stitch because it has a conversion I engine. See. So I save it as a... Uh, mm, I think you told me SVG. I think SVG file and uh, uh, Art and Stitch then will convert that to a quiltable file and it'll save it as a handy quilter file. And we'll answer your questions. If you put questions in the comments, we'd be glad yeah. to answer those questions for you because Joe uh, and I uh, are not... all the time. Yeah, we're losing words. Yeah. So. Um, right, right. And so then it ports straight into my handy quilter and... And stitches out. And stitches out. And you could do these at any size, right? That's the beautiful thing. I set the scale. Once I finally get it into my pro, In stitcher, pro stitcher, I can make it any size I want. So those of you that think computerized quilting is cheating, not creative, I think we've proven you wrong. See, now don't you feel terrible? No, 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 that's not the idea. 
<laughs> we don't want to make you feel terrible. <laughs> we want to open your eyes to the possibilities of robotic quilting. Of robotic quilting. And to me, it, it's really important that uh, um, <clears throat> that uh, the, the, just because it's a robot, it doesn't mean that the, its output has to look like a robot did it. It's not mattress pad quilting. That's right. It, it can look uh, like anything that you can conceive. It can look like anything in the world. And for me, I want it to look freehand. I want it to look like one of my drawings. Uh -huh. And so that's, what, that's the way I used it. And, and again, I think you're the first person to do that. I, I just would love to hear if anybody was doing it before you did. So we invited Joe to come to Handy Quilter as our very first artist in residence. Uh -huh. And he worked with our education studio uh, educators to learn how to do this, to transfer his ideas to stitches. That's right. I had this idea and Brenda invited me to come up and she said, I'll never forget it. Uh, 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 she saw my design and said, oh, why don't you come up here and be my uh, uh, artist in residence for a week? I'll give you my best machine and four technicians. Do you think you'll be able to do that? And yes, I said. <laughs> it didn't I lied. take you long. I had no idea <laughs> if I could do it or not. Um, but it, right. We it started worked. on Monday and Saturday morning got it out of the frame. Yeah, it was terrific. And we've got that quilt hanging here at Handy Quilter and we'll show you a picture of it in just a bit. Yeah. So Joe, you said there were chickens quilted on this quilt. So I, don't, I don't see them from here. Okay. This is called Memo to Lucy. Uh, uh, Your friend from G G's, G's Bend, Bend. With whom I quilted freehand fans. Yes. So uh, I wanted to oh, uh, do an I'm homage seeing some freehand uh, to Lucy. Fans. So instead of quilting, I applicated. I, I did uh, bias tape versions of her fans. She, she once did a quilt that was all white quilted like this. I see. I loved it so much. And I asked her permission. I said, would you mind if a guy from San Francisco did that sometime? She said, no, that's all right. So I got all of that done. And I did what I said a little while ago I don't do. I, said, I decided to just quilt it following the lines. And I just echoed and did quilting that uh -huh. had to do with the color design. Okay. And I hung it up on the wall and I thought it was boring. It was not enough. And so then I remembered Lucy's chickens. And so... I, I see one right here. Yeah, and, there you go. And so we take a closer look. I, uh -huh. I've got chicken feet here, and the beak is up here in this body. Went right over all that bias tape and that former quilting you had already that's, done, right? That's right. It just, I did, uh, right here, if we could come over to this spot, you might be able to see the very drawing of here's the chicken with his head, the, the rooster. The one you just look had at, on I the just computer. Had and then here's his uh, uh, friends around him on both sides. Uh, I don't know if you can see that so, or not. So you keep saying, I don't know if you can see that. And of course, we, we'll get shots so they oh, can good. see it. Oh, good. However, I think that's interesting because this is not a quilt with a quilting those designs jump at you from across the room. I don't right. think I'd see the chickens across the room. No, that's right. And that was not your point. That's right. Right? Your point was an homage to... Lucy, uh -huh. and uh, chickens were part of that message. That's right, and that's an important, another important thing uh, 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 to me is um, uh, that, well, people often think of using quilts to convey a message. Mm -hmm. Oh but, yeah, there's lots of political messages, there's quilts of mourning, quilts of celebration. I'm sending a the message. Meaning. And uh, for me, in general, if I want to send a message, well, the way I do that is with words. Right. I can say <laughs> what I want to say. Right. And Talking, so, texting, emailing, uh, that's on right. the phone. That, that's a good way to send a message. Right. Uh, for me, quilts are a clumsy way to send a message. Uh, um, the, it, it's very, it's, I'm, uh, at least for me, I'm not interested in that. Uh -huh. What I'm interested in is expressing my individuality, right? So okay. I'm, not a, I'm not trying to communicate, I'm trying to express. There's a real difference there, because when you're not here to explain the Lucy Quilt, That's right. that, that message might be gone, but that, the expression of your feelings is still there, even if I don't totally understand what your point was. See why I like Brenda? That's exactly right. You got it. That's it. Uh, uh, so, so, 
uh, so like the quilting, lots of times people will see the back of the quilt and go, well, I couldn't see that at all on the front. We have to show it so that you can see both sides. Every show and tell you go to, you get asked to turn they the quilt around, see, see the and, back. And to me, uh, that's, it's beside the point I'm trying to make. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm not trying to make a point so much as I'm just trying to express my, uh, myself by making this object. And uh, whether you can understand the quilting or not, it, it's not important to me. Mm -hmm. So uh, this quilt uh, has, um, this is called uh, uh, Under the Ice. And it's about. Now, I, I have to say, that does look like ice there. It looks like ice. Yeah. It's an image. What do you know? Uh, my, uh, the idea that I was working with was, uh, you know, as the tundra melts and the ice melts, there's going to be all these stuff that's released. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to uh, be the, a profusion of things that we don't know what. Uh, Are you at the top of your quilt? I'm at the top of my quilt. Okay. Under the ice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so this is, and this is a piece of fabric given to me by the great Pat Pauly. I don't know if you know her or not. I'm, uh, I'm familiar with her. I never had the pleasure of meeting her. Uh, she's a darling. And she gave me this piece of fabric and said, uh, now you have to cut that up. Oh, don't worry, I said. I'll cut off a little corner. And <laughs> but I could, I mean, come on, it's a painting. Yeah. And so uh, it, it conveyed that springing energy that I wanted. So then I designed the quilting to be um, uh, uh, like a bunch of organisms that are popping forth uh, uh, from it. I just took a picture of the weeds in my backyard and uh, um, then transcribed them and, and into Pro Stitcher. And uh, that's what the quilting is. And so it's not a particular image that you can comprehend on the front or the back. Uh, but it gives, it, it's once again kind of chaotic, and it gives the feeling of the energy that I wanted to have. It's like potential that gets released. Do you label your quilts, Joe? I don't label them. Uh, is there a reason you don't? Uh, because I put my name and the date. You, you, uh, you quilt it in. I quilt it in. Okay, I see Joe Cunningham. What about the name of this quilt? You, you called it Under the Ice. Yeah. Do well, you want that name to live with the quilt? Um, I, I, I'll tell you why I'm asking that. Yeah. It's because you've dated it, 2019. And I think if I saw a quilt like this 20 years from now, called Under the Ice, dated 2019, I might be able to put together what you were thinking. Uh-huh. Well, but, that's a but, really good idea that I should put the title on my quilts. Hmm. I, I, I have no reason why I don't. Do you, do you, did you ever get to meet Ernest Haight? I did not. I, uh, Ernest passed away before I got a chance to er, meet him. Ernest Haight was a quilter from Nebraska who was well known for machine quilting. He was one of the first machine quilters, and he was the first to write a book about machine that's right. quilting. And Ernest signed his quilts with a big ballpoint pen. Yeah. <laughs> he just signed him, put yeah. his name on him. We uh, were all mortified, but well, I, that's I, what he did. I had one by Ernest Haight for a long time. I, it was on loan from Julie Silber, and she finally uh, wanted it back, oh, darn it. Shoot. I had to give it back to her. And it was in two inch high letters embroidered around the border. You oh. know, you could, this is a man at work. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, he was a farmer. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, an engineer and a great quilter. And it, uh, I'll never forget it. It said in quote, it had quotation marks. It was called falling blocks, close quote, comma, an original quilt design, <laughs> comma, by Ernest B. Haight. The year was whatever it was, uh, 1936 yeah. or 1943 or something, uh, for, made for Reverend C.W. Davis in uh, something, Nebraska. Yeah, he, he gave went, away quilts to anybody who came by and wanted one. Yeah. Pretty wonderful. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, so, no, I think you're right. I should put the title on there. Well, we have it documented on film. Yeah. So <laughs> people will know. It'll be there for posterity. Yes. Uh, do we have time to look uh, at let, Let's, let's, okay. we got two more quilts and I want to see them. Okay. Well, here we go. This is one um, where the quilting is a little bit more clear. This is called. Uh, see, if you wrote it on your quilt, you would remember. I'd remember. It's called. <laughs> called the Bermuda Rectangle. Oh, see? I can't wait to see this, this one. This one I started uh, during um, uh, <coughs> Hurricane Dorian. Okay. And I wanted to give the Whoa. feeling of a hurricane. So uh, <laughs> my friend uh, John P 
Pappas in uh, Chelsea, Michigan, uh, sent me a bunch of his rags that he cleans off his printing press with. Oh, yeah. So it's where all the color came from. Where all the color came from. And uh, those I quilted with big stitch quilting, as you can see. I, I yeah. uh, did that by hand. And then uh, I made bias tape and... Um, Oh my goodness. And somehow you got a hold of the curtains that were in my bedroom when I was a little girl. I was teaching somewhere <laughs> in Ohio at the whatever conference it was, and somebody was selling this piece of fabric. And as you remember then, from the top of these flowers up, it was just all white. Yes, because it was a curtain panel. It was a curtain panel. Yes. <laughs> and I trimmed that. I trimmed, I cut out all the, all the white, and I sewed this stuff down onto. Uh, the, the the dotted the polka dotted fabric here it's kind of hard to see but you see what i mean yeah so this is here this and edge this edge if we so look I, a little closer we can see where I, you applicate where it. i applicate this I, and so i call I, I this is my own technique and guess what i call it what do you call it joe reverse broderie purse <laughs> see it's broderie purse you're cutting out yeah, the flowers yes. but it's reverse because you're doing the whole Okay. Okay. Well, that's so a down the in history. Of a, of a hurricane, right? <laughs> I want to sign up for that class, <laughs> the reverse Brody purse class. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, I got to do that. I have to teach that class. Did, see, what a good idea. Did Did I see something figurative in this quilting? You did. I I thought I saw buildings or, or what am I seeing here? It's, it's a here? whole city. Uh, so um, I'll try to stay safely over on this end of the quilt. So. There's, at the bottom of the quilt are all of these leaves. Lots of leaves. It's a, uh, I like you looking over. A, and then, uh, it's, so coming from a hillside down toward you, you can see there's houses and streets and trees and... Uh, and they're in perspective because those are smaller than these up up front. That's right. It's kind of hard to read. And you drew these, again, on your iPad with your software. You... And did you maybe start with photographs, or is this oh, just? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I took photographs around San Francisco, ah. uh -huh, and uh, and then traced them, very freely, very freely traced them. You know, mm -hmm. um, because yeah, I wanted the feeling of the cities that'll get obliterated by the hurricane. By the hurricane, okay, and all those pretty flowers. Yes. Will get blown away. All right. Well. We've got one more left. One more. This one is called if you want to take a look here this is one of his newest ones and here's his signature joe cunningham and the year 2020. yep and and you've signed this this is not a zigzag machine this is this also is, with your long arm right? right just little tiny squiggles but i programmed it of course in the pro stitcher no oh well, yeah really yeah Oh, well, really? Yeah. No, I had visions of you standing there actually doing this oh. by hand. You were not, huh? No. You drew it by hand. I, I drew it by hand. I think that's an interesting font, Joe, that people no, might be interested in. I didn't even draw it by hand. I can't even find it. I didn't even draw it by hand. You started with I, a, I, a with font. With a text, with a yeah. font. Yeah, okay. And then I blew it up, and then I, and then I inside the font, I scribbled. Scrib that's so cool. Okay, I'm seeing more bias tape here. A lot which of is bias tape. Kind of your signature That's right. right now. This one is called Rest. And as in, uh, you get it when you look at it or you need it? <laughs> <laughs> you need it. I need a rest uh -huh. for this crazy year. And so I used, uh, 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 I copied, I imitated, I didn't copy. Oh, uh, I think this looks familiar, a Van Gogh. Uh, that's exactly right. From his bedroom? Yes, that's right. It's Vincent's chair. Yes. It's, uh, you can sit there and have a rest. While all this is going on behind While you? While all this is going on behind you. Rest is what it's called. Well, we could all use some rest. We that's true. We could use true. some rest. I wanted to... Once it, yeah, I don't shy away from chaos, do I? Now, now I, I have to tell you something that just popped in my head. Would yeah. you hold that corner up? Yeah. So that looks like a tic-tac-toe board to uh -huh. me. Okay. And in my family, we had a family member who was in a nursing home during uh -huh. COVID, because this is the era of COVID, the pandemic, when uh, grandchildren, great-grandchildren are not allowed to see their grandparents in nursing homes. Oh, it's so awful. But they can get to a window in between them and play tic-tac-toe. Oh. And, and I know of grandkids doing that with grandparents in nursing homes. So that's, to me, that fits. Oh, good. Right? Doesn't it just oh. fit? Oh, that, that's yeah. the story I'm going to tell from now on. There we go. This is for grandparents. <laughs> grand no, I love that. That's, yeah. Yeah. And the quilting 
um, uh, is from uh, an aerial photograph uh, of the winter time in farmland, probably in Nebraska. It I don't, probably. I don't know where it was from. And I, uh, I was so proud of myself for thinking of doing this all like it was, it's an image uh, from overhead, uh, like a satellite image almost. Uh -huh. um, but then when I got it done and realized it, it, it doesn't read at all, it's too close. But so, so, so you imagined that when we viewed the quilt, we would know right away it was this satellite <laughs> yeah, that's what view. I imagined. But it didn't quite turn out. So even Joe sometimes doesn't get what he was <laughs> oh, planning, or that's right. Or always Joe doesn't. No, no, no not, not always. Not always. Uh, no, but I'm. But I am always trying to do something that's beyond my ability, and uh, I'm always trying to do that. Is that the definition of an artist? Do you I don't think? know. Trying to do something beyond your ability. That's what I'm trying to do, and so. I pay for the, uh, my inexperience at this sometimes. Yeah, I do. Uh, so maybe. Maybe. But that's, that's, yeah. So if you've ever had a hankering to do something beyond your ability. Do it. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, come on. It's a quilt. Everything changed for me when I was about 50, uh, which was 18 years ago now. And I was agonizing about something that I couldn't get right. I couldn't get right with my quilt. And I heard a voice in my head say, Joe, you're a 50-year-old man who makes quilts. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares wh about what you're obsessing about. Why don't you, and, and wh who you're trying to impress. Yeah. Trying to impress my historian friends, trying yeah. to impress my quilt expert friends. Who, do, who, why don't you just do what you want, man? So when we talk about messages and how they can come through a text or a phone call or an email and mm -hmm. and you you were we said you were expressing yourself through your quilts uh, would you take yourself into the future 50 years here now you're probably not <laughs> going to be talking about it 50 years from now uh -huh. but somebody's going to be looking at them so what do you want people to look at your quilts and think about joe cunningham uh th that I, I i want them to think well that guy was not afraid of being his own bad self. There you go. That's what I want them to think. Wow. Uh, he, he didn't copy that from anybody else. Oh, Vincent Van Gogh. But uh, <laughs> he, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, I, I, I want my quilts to look like nobody could have made that but me. And not because it's so hard uh, or, or anything like that, but um, just because this stuff is the product of my experiences, my DNA, my everything, just like, every, and that's what I want everybody's quilts to be like. Because that's the greatest thing to me about the quilt tradition that 19th century American women created was it's this realm of creativity. You can do anything you want. And I'm gonna leave you with, make sure you sign your quilts like Joe has, or with a nice little label on the back like I do. Because, you know, one day your great-grandchildren will inherit the quilts and they'll think the other grandfather made them. That's right. That's right. That was not Stanley uh, that <laughs> made them. No. So I want to thank you all for joining us today. Thanks for watching HQ Live. Remember to leave a comment below. Uh, ask questions. We're here to answer them. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you'd like to see more of this good content. And would you also uh, put up a, a, a link to my new book? Yes, in fact, can I show the book? Yeah, you can show the I've, book. I've got it over here. I have just a few copies that are going to be for sale. It's a limited okay. run of only a couple hundred. So Joe's book, Joe Cunningham Quilts, full of pictures of some of the quilts we've seen today. Mm -hmm. And these are available. Uh, we'll put the links below. And until you, we see you again, have fun quilting. Bye-bye. <laughs>